As software engineers, one of the most frequent algorithmic operations we do is to retrieve a node from a collection of data by a certain attribute, in many cases, a unique identifier. Today, I want to show you a data structures and algorithms tip to help you optimize the running time performance of that operation, which will be especially useful if you're dealing with large data sets or performance is critical. So let's work with a specific example. Here in JavaScript, we have an array of objects, which is frequently what you receive from a database. This object has an ID, name, and occupation, just some random fields, to, something to work with. We would frequently want to retrieve an item by its unique identifier. So how do we do that if we keep this, as, this data structure as an array? Well, we can use the array prototype find method, which is a good built-in method to find a specific item from an array that does satisfy a functional comparison. So to do that, we type data find and we pass a function. My function will check if node ID equals, let's say the third item. So this will return the third item and console log it. Let's run this in Node.js. And as you can see, everything is working as expected. We get our third item. So what exactly is the issue here? Well, there really isn't an issue specifically, but let's take a look at the diagram and how this works. We have an array of four objects and I'll illustrate them like this, just four items. Okay, let me zoom a bit. So the array prototype find method, which we're using is implemented in the JavaScript engine, V8 or whatever engine you're currently, whatever environment you're running on, that will depend on it. But generally speaking, this array prototype find method does have an algorithm implemented and it will go through each and every item to find the data node that satisfies your specific requirement, which in this case is to satisfy a specific ID field, which equals that string right here. Now, this algorithm has a runtime complexity of ON, because in the worst case scenario, it will go through each and every array item. Now, we can optimize this in our specific case, and the engine can't optimize it like this, like we can, because it's a JavaScript engine. This find method needs to work for every comparison function you pass to it. So this optimization cannot happen on the engine side. But let's say we use a map. Now you can use a, for this method, you can use an associative array, hash map, a JavaScript object, essentially any kind of map that maps a key to value and is a hash map which can retrieve in constant time by a specific key, a value. So here's what we do. We set the key to the ID of the item and the value to the object of all other properties. And now to retrieve our third item, in this case, Boba Fett by its ID, we can just say data get, as this is a JavaScript map, this is the method implemented to retrieve an item by its key and the ID. So now if we run this code, the result will be very similar to the array find uh, demo we did. We get the properties of the actual data node, but let's see how that is running. As this is a map, this time we do not have this graph, but we do have something else. Each item here has an ID. Let me illustrate that real quick. So let me give it some color so that we can differentiate it from the other. So when the item has an ID as its key, the ID is the key and the object of the other properties is the value. The map get algorithm can be implemented to run in constant time, which is independent of the quantity of items in your map. This way, illustrated with arrows, the algorithm will immediately just find and retrieve the item with the appropriate ID. This is possible using a hash map. Now, this optimization, keep in mind, does cost us, in this case, transforming the data to a map. Now, you might not be able to receive the data from your database as a map. 
This is entirely plausible. In this case, I am illustrating it like this. In that case, to convert the data to a map will still take you linear time. We can do that right here. Let's say we have this array and we want to convert it to a map in order to retrieve in constant time. We can do that. Let's say we make a new map and then we can iterate for each item in data and just um, do the same set and basically uh, populate the map. Now this algorithm right here, this for each method does have a complexity of ON. So essentially, if you built in, if you build that specifically, this map specifically to retrieve a single item every time you're running an algorithm, you're not really making anything better than using array prop I find. In fact, you're doing something worse. You're using more memory and possibly worsening running time performance because you still have to retrieve the actual item after you build the map. On the other hand, if you can build that beforehand and cache it, for example, if, you're, if the actual action, which in this case is my console walk, where I retrieve this is my action, and I retrieve this item in this case. Let's say that this thing runs on a user triggered event, like on click, or if this is a user interface, for example. So this happens when a user interacts. But this operation right here, the building of the cached map, can happen in idle time, when the application doesn't have anything else to do, or when you won't. At this, at this stage, Operations are cheaper in terms of user experience. If you're getting slow responses from manipulating large chunks of data, you can do this cached map in addition to your array. This way you would, you would have an array and a map. Now, note, you would have to synchronize those at all times, which can be complex. But this does have the advantage of optimizing running time performance when you find by ID in this case, but Really, the key can be any value here of your data node. And do note, you are sacrificing memory, in this case, the memory for each of these data nodes, to store another object in order to optimize runtime performance, which is very frequently done in modern software because memory is more plentiful, but runtime can sometimes be problematic. Note, in most cases, and I'll leave you with that, in most cases, ON complexity and just using uh, the array prototype find method is completely fine and you shouldn't worry about it. Especially if you're dealing with a very small number of items. If you're dealing with 100 or even 1,000, 10,000 items with very few data fields, you would not notice any difference. You would not notice any difference even if you benchmark some in some ways. So don't bother over optimizing, making your code more complex. On the other hand, if you're seeing slow performance, if you're dealing with large data sets, like 500,000 plus items, and um, you do need to optimize performance, and that is a priority for you. This pattern is frequently used using a hash map to sacrifice memory to improve runtime performance. So I wanted to demonstrate it because it's very useful, especially for front-end developers, for data manipulation, it's just something I use every day to day to work and I find it extremely useful. With this, I'll wrap today's video. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when another video is released. Take care.